So that's where the that's where the Africa Pavilion was. Oh, that's right. Fifty years ago. That is correct. Is that how you remembered it? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. AR can be more than simple a simple digital overlay. Um, of information. I mean, I think AR is certainly about enhancing environments. It's about conveying information. Um, and it's also about helping us to interpret information. Mixed reality endeavors, uh, like using AR, for example, to enhance uh, cultural historical environments, environments in which various artifacts, objects, buildings have vanished, and yet there is this deep living history. You know, AR can really make history come alive, not only by representing an environment and enabling you to kind of walk up to something that all of a sudden appears, but also um, it serves as a platform for multimedia. And that's uh, indeed what uh, digital heritage uh, can, can, can be about. This is what we're aiming for, is to create a flexible platform, a flexible tool uh, to be able to teach about digital heritage and also to enable people to experience it on site. Soaring 12 stories above the New York World's Fair, the stainless steel Unisphere makes its official debut as symbol of the most ambitious exposition that man has ever attempted. Set in 646 acres, the Billion Dollar Show opens its doors to an expected 70 million people. It's very important, I think, to have these kinds of interactive experiences because um, just walking around in a solitary manner, uh, finding these things, uh, then accessing information, um, it, it won't, it will not hold interest quite, quite as much. Um, and in terms of uh, the interaction between the generations, I think that this is really... Um, a very, it's a very important up-and-coming field. More, more people are, being, are doing research in intergenerational communication, intergenerational learning. It's extremely important. It's a kind of microcosm of history, right? Because you have an older partner who's working with you who is able to impart certain kinds of information to then be able to reflect upon their experience in the communities that we're working in in New York City. Um, in Flushing Meadow, Corona Park. The surrounding neighborhoods are the most international immigrant neighborhoods in all of New York City, arguably uh, in the United States. Um, and uh, we want to be able to reach those populations. We want to be able to engage them with the park. This is not just a white middle class experience to be learning about the history of this place. Um, these are the people who are using the park. We want them to be able to have uh, a kind of historical experience of social life, really for them to engage in critical humanities inquiry. That is, to be able then to reflect upon their own social worlds and see them as historical worlds, see them as connected to the worlds um, that have gone before. So many of us in the digital humanities who are creating these projects, these, these projects, to, these hypertextual pro projects on these medieval texts, cultural heritage projects in which you're experiencing and seeing things in an environment that are, that are no longer there, um, all of these really seek a certain outcome, and that is a, the ability to reflect upon one's own experience and one's own subject position within their own society.